Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a few things that I purchased recently in a haul. I know I was supposed to be on a shopping freeze, a buying freeze, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it. Uh, one of the viewers that I was talking to last week um, on our happy hour um, suggested I try a few fragrances and I got my hands on a couple. Jeanette, I'm still looking for a few of the other ones that you talked about. But in that happy hour, we were discussing some of these fragrances that she thought I might really enjoy. Um, I was talking about how some of the fragrances that I love are more of the creamier, powdery, kind of just uh, fragrances that have those types of notes. She gave me some recommendations. Um, her, seriously, Jeanette, your collection is pretty extensive because everyone that you had mentioned, I was familiar with, but I didn't have them. And, um, and those of you who are able to join us, um, thank you for hanging out with us. As you can see, I am not in my studio at the moment. I'm switching a couple of things around. So I am in my uh, dining room at this time. And I don't know if you can see any of my uh, doggies in the background, but if you happen to hear them, they are joining me in this video. Few of the fragrances that I tried, um, and it was something that I had talked about um, and wanting to get a hold of, was Narciso Rodriguez Pudre. And I know many of you have probably already have this in your collection. Some of you may have just decluttered it because you've heard that it is more of a powdery type of fragrance. Some of you describe it as it being too creamy, too powdery. I hadn't tried it at all. so. This one came in a, it was a seller that I normally trust from eBay and um, his particular fragrance that he had was not one that was, um, it did have a box, but it wasn't sealed. So I went ahead and just kind of took the box because it wasn't in its best condition. So um, I have tried this one or two times uh, this week, but this is a first impressions video. There are some fragrances that I have been familiar with. There are some fragrances here that I am familiar with. There are fragrances I've never tried before. So it's just a combination of things. But with uh, Narciso Rodriguez fragrances, this Poudre is along the same type of fragrance that he normally focuses on. It, they're muskier type fragrances. Um, this one is musky and it is said to be a white floral fragrance. And what I have heard is that the people that have decluttered it is because they have said it was too much of that baby powder type dry down. Now for me, I don't smell baby powder. I do smell a powdery note to it and I do smell creaminess um, but I don't get baby powder. And I, I know some people talk about it being just too heavy in that way. I actually am enjoying it, Jeanette. This is warm. This is spicy. Hmm. I, I, I am actually enjoying this fragrance. I really like this fragrance at first impression. It's not something that I am like not liking. I definitely am liking it. You can totally tell that this is a Narciso Rodriguez DNA on it. This one is said to be a little sweeter, a little more vanillic, has a little bit of rose. I'm not smelling the rose right up on the blotter card. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my notes because like I said, this is new to me. This is not a fragrance I have had in my collection before. And this is considered to be mostly a signature scent. Some people would not wear this during the summertime. And I can see why it's a little sweeter. It's a little heavier. It definitely has that powdery muskiness to it, but is a love love for many of you. 
This one has jasmine and Bulgarian rose. It has orange blossom. In the middle notes, it's musky. And in the base notes, you have camarum, cedar, vetiver, and patchouli. Now the patchouli is definitely, like you can tell, it's there, it's apparent. Just like Narcissa Rodriguez, uh, the original uh, for her in the black bottle. You can smell the patchouli on that. This one is just gonna be a softer, pillowy type fragrance. So, Jeanette, you did a good job recommending this to me. This is Narciso Rodriguez Poudre. I'm liking it so far. Okay. All right, so the next one was something that a dear friend of mine recommended. Um, I love Hermes fragrances, and this was one that she had, um, suggested that I give a try. Um, she was the one who has recommended a few of the other Hermes fragrances to me, and I trust her judgment because she always smells amazing. Um, so Monica, thank you for that. Um, this one is Kelly Kalesh, and um, we talked about it briefly um, the last time that we were together on the show. And this one here is just high quality. It is um, just a really gorgeous fragrance. It has rose and violet. It has multiple different florals to it. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Definitely floral. This one is definitely brighter. This one is definitely, um, not as heavy. I can see this being more of a transition fragrance, more fall, more spring. It's beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at the notes. Um, in the notes, there's leather, rose, violet, mimosa, iris, vanilla, and tuberose. So yeah, definitely a lot of floral in this, but it's beautiful. The leather in this fragrance is not heavy and it's not smoky, it's not too earthy, it's not too animalic. The leather is just a softer, subtle way that it's blended. It really isn't um, heavy at all, but it is beautiful. And the main accords there, I mean, it has leather in it, but it's not something that I would consider too heavy on the leather. I think the floral really does make a, a difference in that, and it kind of just balances itself out. There's a good balance in that. This one is Kelly Kalish, and this is Hermes. All right, the next one that um, was recommended, I have not opened yet. This one is Tresor's Midnight Rose by Lancome. And I have a few of Lancome's fragrances and I really enjoy them. They give you long wearability, at least they do on me. Um, and normally it, they've all worked out for me. Like I've really enjoyed all of their fragrances. So um, I'm excited to try this one. Um, Jeanette and I were talking and she said, definitely got to give this one a try because I was telling her that I love La Nuit Tresor Nude and then La Nuit Tresor a la Folie. And she said, go ahead and give Midnight Rose a try. This bottle is gorgeous. Look at that. It has this ombre effect. It's got this beautiful burgundy wine looking floral. And then it goes down to the deeper um, color. Okay, this one is said to be a fruity rose kind of jammy type fragrance. Let's take a whiff. Okay, it's definitely, it's, it's beautifully done here. Okay, so what I see is when I look at this bottle, and the design team did an excellent job with that. When I look at this bottle, 
it speaks to what it smells like. Um, this is berry. I smell berries. I smell fruitiness. I smell something that is on the lighter, sweeter, not heavy sweet, not sugary sweet, but sweeter in the berry aspect. So I smell something more, hmm, it's, I'm smelling like, I don't know if it's blackberry or raspberry. It's really pretty. I'm gonna try this one on my skin. I don't get like a heavy rose. Like it's not like the Delina. It doesn't have that very strong rose forward. I think they did a really good job with the berries that are added to this to balance out that floral. There's got to be something else to this. So I'm smelling something like another type of floral, maybe peony or, and then I smell like, almost like, um, if you know the liqueur, like cassis liqueur, um, that's what I'm smelling. Um, let me see, on the main accords, it's fruity, it's rose, it says sweet, soft and spicy, aromatic, it's woody. I don't smell the woody, but maybe that's what's grounding it. It says that it's fresh and floral, green and musky. Very, very light on the musk. I don't smell it being very musky at all. This to me smells more a light floral with much of that berry, juicy type fragrance. Now, as it starts to dry down, I am smelling more of the rose, more of the floral. I'm gonna take a look at the notes, okay. So in the top notes, there's raspberry and rose, and in the middle notes, there's cassis, pink pepper, peony, and jasmine. Jasmine, I think, is what's making it a little more green, a little bit more fresh. Um, and then in the base notes, there's vanilla, musk, and Virginia cedar. This is beautifully done. So, so far, I think this one's my favorite out of the ones I've tried so far. Um, and I, I just, I don't know, I'm a visual person, so that bottle is so beautiful. So far, Tresor Midnight Rose is the favorite out of the ones I've tried in this video. Okay, in this little collection that I have here. All right. So the other one that we were discussing the other night was uh, Givenchy's Hot Couture EDT. And I was talking about how I, like the EDP was new to my collection. I really enjoyed it. It was something that I was loving lately and I couldn't get a hold of the EDT version, which is supposed to be like everyone's favorite. Like people are preferring that one more so than the EDP. And I said, well, if the EDP smells that good, I definitely want to try the EDT. So there were some recommendations and some comments left um, on Instagram about where I could locate it. And I was able to find it. Um, this one did not come in a box, but it did come with the top and it is a tester. It is a tester. Now it looks like it may, may have been sprayed a few times, but I was willing to take a chance on this one just because I was able to save a few dollars and I could find it. Like I wanted to find it in the original bottle. Okay. I wanted to find it in the original bottle. Now I know they've come out with the newer version where the bottle is more, um, like, a, I guess it's more modernized. It's not as like this speaks nineties 
to me. Like it just does, just the way the, the bottle is designed. Um, and the modern version, the new packaging, it's a little more rounded, it's a little more boxy. Um, and I don't know, I prefer this one. I think this one is more attractive looking. So I was okay with trying it as a tester. Now, I haven't sampled this before. I haven't tried it, so I'm excited to see. Now this one is supposed to also be a fruity sweet fragrance. Um, it's warm and spicy as well. It does have rose. It says it to be a little citrus, but it has amber in it. So oh, I'm struggling with my blotter cards. Okay. Beautiful atomizer, very light in the spray. Interesting, okay, so I am smelling a floral that is more watery, a watery floral, almost like those, those flowers that come out after the rain. This is definitely, obviously it's going to be lighter, not as heavy as the EDP. What I remember in the EDP has a little bit more of a smokier, boozier type um, depth to it. Whereas this one is definitely lighter. <sighs> it's creamier. It's so pretty. It really is pretty. I, I don't know. I mean, I can see this being used like I would use the EDP during the fall and winter. And then the EDT, I think I would take this into the spring and even in the summer nights, I, I, I think you could do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, of course, it's by Alberto Morias. That's why I remember now. Let's take a look at the notes. Um, bergamot, Almafi lemon. Okay, that's where that freshness, the citrusy is coming in, but it's not heavy on the lemon at all. Don't think of it as that really kind of sharp punch in the start. It's not. It's very delicate. It's very soft. It's more of the bergamot where it's still citrus, but it's light. This one is supposed to have, in the middle notes, raspberry spices, big strawberry, magnolia, rose, and tuberose. So I think the magnolia is that watery type floral that I'm thinking. It's very, very pretty. This is like an elegant, feminine, pretty, delicate, just, oh, it, it is, I'm very pleasantly surprised. It is very different um, from the EDP, and I love the EDP so much, but I'm excited that I'm going to be able to carry Hot Couture, not only in the fall and winter like I would the EDP. It says to have spices, but I, I, it's something more delicate. It's not heavy at all. The raspberry is giving it a little bit of a tartness, but the strawberry keeps it a little sweet. In the base note, it says to have vetiver, amber, and musk. Again, the musk is a very, very light. Just enough to keep it creamy, but not heavy enough to where it's more of a deeper powdery type dry down. Oh, this is good, I'm excited, okay. All right, Hot Couture, such beautiful juice on that. That is so pretty. I'm excited to have the EDT. All right. All right, so the next one that I have is one that I have not experienced in probably, gosh, when did it come out? I wanna say 30 years. It was the tail end of my um, time at the counter when I was uh, selling fragrances um, I was actually a fragrance rep um, in the women's department. This one had come out around that time, but it was towards the tail end of what I want to say, like, you know, my fragrance career. 
Um, it put me through college, and so it was beneficial to have that job for me. Um, this one is by Givenchy, and it is organza. I'm going old school, but I fell in love with the bottle, um, and I wanted to revisit because as I was shopping, there were some reviews on this still to this day talking about how wonderful and still current this fragrance is. Um, that was on one particular site that I shop on. And then I went to Fragrantica and, you know, took a look at what some of the people had said. And it's still a love for many. I think they tend to like this fragrance. It's not one that you must have in your collection. But I know when one of my besties, Jeanette, different from my Jeanette, who I met recently, um, Jeanette, and maybe I'll put a picture of us here back at the counter um, if I can locate one. I'm thinking of her because she would wear Amorige and she would wear Organza and she always smelled gorgeous like and she still does to this day we were out the other night and she was wearing Baccarat Rouge 540 and I was like oh my gosh Jeanette you smell amazing and then she was like but Vomit's not Baccarat Rouge and I was like what of course it is well she was wearing Red Temptation she just wanted to see you know if it was something that was comparable and it really was it smelled just like baccarat rouge on her and so it was funny because we were out and about and she just wanted to share that with me and she's like but you do know your fragrances and i was like well that one's it's just become so um i don't want to i guess mainstream but it's a love for so many and so um when she smelled so gorgeous i thought about thinking i thought about all the times that she like all my besties right all the different fragrances that we use which ones were signature to us which ones and, it, and this kind of conversation came up when um one of the uh viewers on our live show uh, the other day said, you know, what was the fragrance that you can remember that started your love for fragrances? Which one was it? And it, I, I'm telling you, it took me way back because it was Giorgio Beverly Hills was one of them. And then Mackie by Bob Mackie was my signature scent. And yes, we're talking 40, 30, 35 years ago. Okay, so Organza was a fragrance that my girlfriend wore, and I consider this first impressions because I haven't tried it in so long. And just reading the reviews from some of um, Organza fans, I, I needed to revisit it. It just seems like such a classy fragrance. It's such, it's a fragrance that's not going to, you know, be outdated it's one that will last the test of time just because it is so classy and it has just traditional notes to it this is so pretty i i'm gonna need to rate it on fragrantica as a love for me because um it maybe for for some of you who are a younger viewer of mine um, might not feel like you could you could wear this or maybe it reminds you of of your mom or something but this is such a pretty elegant fragrance that is so classy I just don't I don't see it being outdated I don't see it like it doesn't remind me of those 80s and 90s fragrances back in the day um, let me see when this one came out this one oh, is so good. This is, is definitely signature scent. Like you can wear this at any time of the year. It is so beautiful. So to me, this is romantic. To me, I would wear this to bed. Like I could see wearing it to bed. I could see wearing it to an elegant dinner. Um, it's not something that you're going to offend someone. Like I think it's office safe as well, but it can be sexy it can be seductive it's just how you pull it off it's what you're wearing it's what you're how you're presenting it it's how you wear it oh this is so good 
All right, so I can put that I have it because I hadn't. Okay, I'll finish that up later. All right, so it's considered to be an amber floral. For those of you um, who follow me on Instagram recently, I posted about Sarah Jane Ho and her new um, Netflix series on Mind Your Manners. I think of, of her, that type of style, that type of classy, and she's still very, very young. And so she, I believe she's like 28 years old. And so I still can see someone of that age, but with that look wearing this fragrance. Um, this is a white floral, woody, fresh, spicy, vanilla, tuberose, nutty, has a little bit of an animalic scent to it and a slight powdery dry down, ever so slight powdery dry down. Um, and in the top notes, you have nutmeg and gardenia, African orange flower, bergamot, and green notes. In the middle, you have tuberose, jasmine, honeysuckle. That's what it is here that is really, it's standout. That's what I'm smelling. And that to me is just, is, it's so beautiful. Iris, peony, and mace. And then, um, Vanilla in the base notes with amber, woody notes, quiotic wood, and Virginia cedar. Uh, gotta give this one another try. And if you have not tried it, it is such a great fragrance that is cost effective. This, this bottle right here, I think it cost me 28 bucks. I really think that that's all I paid for it. This is the 1.7 fluid ounce. Um, and it is a beautiful fragrance. Like I can't wait to wear more of it. I'm so glad I, I decided to revisit this fragrance. It had been a long time since I had experienced it and it's so, she's so classic. Look how pretty she is. You know, when we're here, this is just about taking a little bit of a escape from all the other things that are going on in this world having a small few indulgences in our life. And, you know, most importantly, we always need to make sure that we are focusing on the love for one another. And so I wish you a good day. I wish you a good night. And um, hopefully this holiday season will be good to you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you back in the next one. Take care.